Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another updates from my YouTube channel. Hello friends, today I am going to talking about Apache Kafka. So in this video, I am going to talk about what is Apache Kafka and what are the benefits of using like Apache Kafka and so what is the key features of the Apache Kafka and how to integrate this Apache Kafka in the Spring Boot. So what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of using this Apache Kafka? I am going to explain in this video. Okay, so first of all, like what is Kafka? So Kafka is nothing but like it's a open source distributed event streaming platform. Okay, so so Apache Kafka is a distributed data store. Okay, optimized for like ingesting and processing streaming data in real time. So, uh, so this is used by thousands of companies for a high performance data pipelines and streaming analytics and data integrations and machine critical applications so here i mentioned like event streaming platform so what is the event streaming basically so event streaming um, is nothing but streaming the data is a data that is continuously okay generated by thousands of data sources so event streaming is the practice of capturing the data in real time from event sources like databases sensors mobile devices cloud services and software applications in the form of streams of events and what are the key features and advantages of kafka so the first one is high scalability so kafka is designed for like horizontal scalability okay so horizontal scalability means like allowing it to handle massive amount of data by adding more hardware or like nodes to that cluster without any downtime and high throughput and low latency first of all like what is throughput a throughput is a measure of how many units of information a system can process in a given amount of time okay so whereas latency what is the latency basically latency is nothing but like um, the delay in the network communication so it shows that time that the data takes to the transfer across that network right so here high throughput means what so high throughput means um, I mean like uh, so it is capable of like handling like high velocity and high volumes of data so Kafka can handle millions of messages per second and low latency what is a low latency here so so Kafka can store the data in a memory so that will enable quick read and write operations with low latency because it will store the data in the memory right so that is the reason it will enable that you can read and write operations with a low latency so that can be deliver this high volumes of messages using a clusters of machines with the latencies as low as two milliseconds max okay and after that we have like distributed systems so what are the distributed systems here so kafka is distributed architecture so that will ensure that fault tolerance and reliability so data is distributed across multiple nodes okay that will reduce in the risk of the data loss and we have a publish and subscribe messaging system okay so it operates as a publish subscribe system so where producer can publish the messages publish the messages or data to the topics and consumer subscribe to those topics to receive the data okay so and this is publish and subscribe messaging system whereas like retention and durability so what is the retention and durability here so if we're talking about the retention durability kafka offers configurable configurable retention periods of messages so that will ensuring the data durability over the time here so data can be stored for a specified duration or like size so that will allow for like uh, if you want to replay or like reprocessing your data so this retention durability will come into the picture okay so i mean like uh, I mean you can safely securely store the streams of data in a distributed and durable and reliable and fault tolerant cluster so support for stream processing here so what is a stream processing here so basically it provides a stream a streaming platform for a building real-time streaming data pipelines and applications okay so kafka streams api enables streaming processing so within the kafka ecosystem itself and we have a connectivity and integrations so kafka supports like um, connectors that facilitate the integration with the various data sources and sins okay so that will allow the seamless data transfer between like couple of systems and what are the kafka key concepts here so the first one is producers 
consumers consumer group topics partitions partitions offset brokers leader follower replications kafka clusters okay so these are the kafka key concepts so you should know so before you're going to implement any spring boot with like kafka application right so you should know this key concepts here so first of all like what is the producers here so the producers is nothing but the producers send the streams of data to the topics in the kafka clusters so here we, we have a producer this producer would send the messages to this topics i mean like streams of data to this topics in the kafka cluster so this topic available in, inside this apache kafka ecosystem this apache kafka ecosystem will have a kafka cluster so this kafka cluster will contains more than one broker okay this broker will contains this topic okay so this topic will store the streams of data so this is how this producer will make use this topic okay to send the streams of data to this topic and we have a consumers on the topics what is the consumer set the consumers subscribe to those topics and read the data from the partition so here we have a couple of producers this producer will send the message to this um, topics here right so here we have a consumers so the consumer subscribe to this topics and read the data from the partitions right so what is the topics here so topics will store the data right so basically so data is organized and stored in kafka topics right so which is act as a logical channel for the message here so this is consumers and topics the next one is consumer group here so what is a consumer group so if you are talking about the consumer group so the consumer group will contains more than one consumer right so consumers are organized into consumer groups here so where each group read from a topic so here we have a, a one consumer group this consumer group is reading the data from one topic here and what is kafka partitions here okay so partitions each topic is split into couple of partitions here we have like topic one which is split into the multiple partitions here that is top partition 0 and partition 1 right so where the basic unit of parallelism and distribution in the kafka so here the messages within the partitions are ordered and assigned an offset for tracking here so here we have consumer group 1 and consumer group 2 these are two consumer groups are parallelly consuming the data from this partitions here and we have a kafka partitions right so as i mentioned earlier so each partitions within a topic consumed by only one consumer within a group here so why so basically this will improve the performance of the system so that will allow like for parallel processing here so if you are observe here so we have a consumer group 1 and consumer group 2 here right so each consumer group has two consumers right so each consumer okay consume by only uh, each consumer so here consumed by only one partition right not multiple partitions that is not allowable here okay okay so i am going to discuss about consumer behavior with the partitions here so what if like if if you are having like single consumers or like multiple partitions or like if you are having like multiple consumers with multiple partitions how the consumer will behave with the partitions okay so that's what i'm going to discuss here so suppose let's say that i have a single consumer here okay now this topic has a four partitions this consumer group has like only one consumer okay so now so all the partitions okay so this consumer will consumed by all these partitions okay all four partitions can be consumed by the single consumer here so what if if this consumer group has like more than one consumer right so now if two consumers are present then these two consumers will consume two of the partitions from this topic each consumer so that is like kafka will be auto balance and assign two partitions to each consumer for load distributions here okay partition 0 and partition 2 will be consumed by this consumer 1 whereas partition 1 and partition 3 will be consumed by this consumer group as per consumer 2 here and now so this topic has a four partitions and this consumer group also having four consumers here right so both are identical here right so each consumer consumes the data from one partition so that will ensure the balanced consumption here so here we have uh, five consumers in the consumer group whereas we have a four partitions so that means like we have a one more extra consumer okay so in this case 
all the partitions okay will be consumed sorry all the consumers will be consumed by this all the four partitions here and the remaining uh, consumer will sit idle here okay so that means like uh, each partition can only be consumed by one consumer at a time here okay and this scenario actually having like more than one consumer group so the first consumer group has in, uh, having like four consumers whereas like a second consumer group has like two consumers so the first consumer group all the four consumers will consume the all the four partitions here and whereas like consumer group 2 has like two consumers right the first consumer will consume the two partitions whereas second consumer from the consumer group 2 will consume another two partitions okay so this is how the consumer behavior uh, will be look like with the partitions and we have like kafka partitions offsets so in apache kafka so basically a offset is a unique identifier that represents the position of a consumer basically within the particular partition of a topic okay so why basically offsets are coming to the picture so offsets are like crucial for consumers to keep the tracks of their positions in the topic partitions so consumers uses this offsets to know which messages to which messages they have to already consume and which ones they need to consume the next okay so, so for example initialization so when a consumer group is initialized okay or a new consumer joins in a group so it needs to know so where the um, where to start the consuming the messages from okay and so this is when the object comes to the play right so this consumer group coordinator assign the each consumer with the group <coughs> so partition to consume from and initial object to start consuming from so here we have uh, one topic so this topic has multiple partitions right so partition 0 partition 1 partition 2 and partition 3 so here we have like uh, uh, each partition has like offsets right in an incremental order so this is how the messages will write this on like um, partition offsets and the consumer consuming the message by using this offsets right so as a consumer reads the message from the partition it keeps tracks of the offset of the last message it consumed okay so this offset is the periodically committed back to the kafka as well so by doing this if consumer crashes or neck needs to be restarted it can resume consuming from where it left off okay by starting from the last committed offset and so brokers and replications uh, what is the broker here so brokers are kafka servers that manage the data stories okay so here we have like couple of brokers right so we have a broker one broker two and broker three so kafka cluster typically consists of multiple brokers to maintain the load balancer here. so kafka brokers are stateless here so they use jokeeper for maintaining their cluster state so so here kafka broker instance can handle hundreds of thousands of read and writes per second okay so and each broker can handle terabytes of messages without any performance in fact so here we have a broker one broker two and broker three so each each one will have a topic one okay and partition zero and partition so we have like uh, individual topics and individual partitions here right so each topic partitions having replica with like another broker here so so kafka uses the replication to ensure the fault tolerance here so and data durability so if any broker goes goes down here so each partition has one leader and multiple followers right so this leader and followers that distribute the same data across the multiple brokers if any one of the broker goes down so another broker will uh, having the replica with this partition so this is how this will handle like fault tolerance and data durability and we have a jukeeper so here the jukeeper acts as a distributed coordination service in kafka so jukeeper is used to managing and coordinating kafka broker so jukeeper service is mainly used to notify the producer and consumer about the presence of any new broker in the system or like failure of the broker in the kafka system okay so let's say that um, as per the notification received by the jukeeper regarding the presence or like failure of the broker then the 
producer okay and consumer takes a decision and starts coordinating their task with the some other broker here okay so that's what i mentioned here this is uh, i mean like uh, this will act as a distributed coordination service in kafka so that will facilitate tasks such as metadata management leader election consumer grouping coordination and configuration management for maintaining reliable and efficient distributed streaming platform here okay and this is the kafka cluster ecosystem okay kafka ecosystem will look like this so uh, i will explain one by one here okay so if you can observe here so you must aware of this main terminology such as the topics brokers producer consumers here okay so this diagram will uh, have like a couple of terminologies here okay so here the producer the producer will sending the message to this topics here so the topics again will contains the partitions the partitions will have offsets to track the consumer group or consumers here right so once the producer will send the message to this uh, topics the topics will store the data inside this partitions right now so from here the kafka brokers okay will take into this Okay, brokers here brokers are simple system so that is responsible for maintaining the published data here each broker may have a zero or more partitions per topic here okay so each brokers will have a leader and follower here okay so what it will do is basically if there are like n partitions and topic then less than n brokers each broker will have one or more partitions that will sharing among them okay so from there uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Kafka brokers will have a replicas throughout this servers. Okay, so if any one of the broker, I mean server will goes down, other one will become like primary server here. Okay, and we have a consumer group. So this consumer group will have like more than one consumer. Okay, those um, uh, this consumer read the data from the brokers. Consumer subscribe to one or more topics and consume published messages by pulling the data from the brokers here okay and yeah so here we have a uh, jukeeper right so as i mentioned earlier jukeeper here uh, jukeeper is used to managing and coordinating the kafka broker here so jukeeper service is mainly used to notify the producer and consumer about the presence of any new broker in the kafka system or like failure of the broker in the kafka system okay uh, whatever that offset it has right so that will uh, this consumer will have the offset values right so this offset values again it has to be update the offset values back to this jukeeper again if kafka has to know so the offset values this kafka will get the offset values from this jukeeper okay so and this is how the apache kafka ecosystem will look like and apache kafka 3.3 so in the latest versions there is no jukeeper so apache kafka 3.3 replaces jukeeper with the new care of consensus protocol okay so this consensus protocol basically uh, yeah yeah this is how this will look like so that is kafka raft that will called as a care of protocol okay so kafka raft metadata mode sometimes referred as a k raft so which is an alternative metadata mode so that is introduced in apache latest kafka version to replace the dependency on apache jukeeper cluster coordination and metadata management here okay so the kafka cluster the current kafka cluster will look like this so each broker will have a quorum controller here okay so there is no jukeeper here so these quorum controllers will take care of this reading and writing the events to this metadata topic there is a metadata topic so that metadata topic will maintain this metadata inside this kafka cluster okay so yeah this is the one more update in the current kafka version and kafka use cases so where you can use kafka exactly so to process the payments are like financial transactions in real time right uh, such as in stack exchanges or banks or insurances okay and uh, to track and monitor the ports and tracks right and shipments in real time such as the logistics and the automotive industry so we'll use this kafka and apart from this to continuously capture and analyze the sensor data from iot devices or like other equipment such as in factories and wine parks 
you would use this Kafka. And mm -hmm. apart from this, uh, if you want to collect immediately react the customers' interactions uh, in e-commerce on order sites right, such as retail, our hotel and travel industry, we will use this Kafka. And apart from this, in hospitals as well, right, to monitor the patients in hospital care and predict the changes in the condition to ensure the timely treatment in emergencies. And apart from this, if you want to connect, store and make available data produced by different divisions of company. Okay. And at, but last, uh, the last one is like to serve as the foundation for the data platforms, right? Even driven architectures and microservices also, we will use Kafka here. Okay. So this is overall the Kafka. So now we will jump into this Kafka. Spring Boot with Apache Kafka integration. To work with this Spring Boot with Kafka, so the prerequisite is we need to install this Kafka in our machine. Okay, so I have already installed this latest version in my system. Okay, so current version is like 3.6.1 that is installed on my machine. Okay, so which will support Kraft instead of Zookeeper. Okay, and so we need to run this kafka on my machine right so to run this kafka so we need like couple of commands here okay so if you are using like uh, kafka with zookeeper so uh, this is the official documentation of this kafka you can just go through here so if you are using zookeeper uh, kafka with zookeeper ju just use this commands otherwise if you are using like kafka with kraft you can use these commands okay so first of all we need to generate a cluster uuid okay so the cluster uuid so basically it will generate a unique cluster id so you will create a copy of unique um, identifier so which is used in like kraft to uniquely identify the brokers on the same clusters okay and after that we need to format the log directories by using this uuid so we need to paste uuid here okay so this will format the log directories and after that we need to start the kafka server okay by using this command so that's it right so it's very simple so first of all we need to generate uuid here okay let's go to terminal let's hit this okay it's generated uuid okay and let's copy this and let's paste here okay copy this command again so come back to your terminal let's hit this okay so what it is saying that this is already formatted so it is saying that it is already formatted so you can ignore this so the third command is if you're if you're running the first time right so it will format the log directories okay and the third one is you need to start okay Kafka server by using this command okay so it started successfully so if you want to see like um, the details of this kafka so you can just go through here okay and once it is started we are good to use this kafka in your local mission right so i need to talk more deeply about producer so before i can move forward with the writing the producer program here okay so here we have like a producer so these producers uh, will send the data to this kafka topics right so kafka producers send the messages asynchronously here okay before sending the message to this kafka producers serialize the data into a byte format why because this kafka brokers will expect it into the byte format okay that is the reason we have to be transform object or like message into a byte format before we are going to sending this event messages to this kafka topics okay and Kafka topics are divided into partitions okay so you can see here we have a partition 1 2 and 3 here right and producers can choose explicitly specify the partition to which message okay which message should be sent here and apart from this basically we have a Kafka message keys here each event message okay contains a optional key and a value so in case if you are sending the key as a null okay i mean like if you are not sending key as specified by the producer so the messages are distributed evenly uh, messages are distributed evenly across partitions in a kafka topic here 
so this means messages are sent a round robin fashion so that is like partition um, one two and three as well so if key let's say that if you are specified key i mean like if you are uh, sending key as part of these messages that share the same key will always be sent and stored in the same kafka partition let's say that if you are sending any key as one two three here okay so that same key will always be sent and stored in the same kafka partition so that will share to this kafka partition one always so and apart from this uh, basically we have one more important setting that is kafka producers can configure acknowledgement settings okay so as a shortcut we will call it as a ax okay acknowledgement settings to control the durability and reliability of the message delivery okay so so let's say that uh, while you are sending the messages right so uh, kafka producer can choose to receive acknowledgement of a data rights okay so acknowledgement also known as a confirmation so if you want the con confirmation then we need to uh, use this ax so we have a three types of acknowledgements one is ax equal to zero uh, that is possible data loss and acknowledgement equal to one that x equal to one okay x equal to one so let's talk about x equal to zero so in this case the producer just sends the data that will not wait for any acknowledgement from this broker okay so in this case uh, there is a possibility data loss because if you send the data to your broker okay and uh, the broker is down so we do, you don't know okay so what happened over there so we did not get any confirmation so in x equal to 0 so there a possible data loss is there and x equal to 1 so what is that x equal to 1 x equal to 1 means like so so by default a kafka 2.0 will make use this x equal to 1 here okay and which uh, the leader acknowledgement here so leader acknowledgements here we have a uh, Kafka brokers will have a one leader and two replicas, right? So uh, if you can see here the leader response requested here So uh, we have a producer here. So this producer uh, Will send the data to this. Okay data to this leader Okay, and after that the leader says I got the data and uh, Immediately it will send the response to this producer right so then what will happen is uh, the producer know uh, that the broker has the data but if the leader goes down let's say that if the leader goes down okay uh, before the replicas uh, before the replicas have a chance the replicate the data in. so we have a two replicas right this data is not yet replicated to these two replicas but if the leader is goes down then there might be a data loss so this is x equal to 0 so that is called as a limited data loss and apart from this we have a x equal to all okay so in this case uh, x equal to all means it basically saying that i want the replicas to be acknowledged here so in the x equal to 1 basically the leader is uh, provide the confirmation right so here uh, the leader will take the acknowledgement from these two replicas as well so in this case so it will take the uh, two replicas confirmation then only it will send the acknowledgement or like response to this producer so in this case there is no data loss okay so now let's jump into this coding okay so till now we have covered like theoretically right so now i'm going to explain about so how to create this Kafka producer and consumer okay so we need like two things right one is uh, producer another one is consumer so by using this producer I will send the messages to that Kafka topic right so uh, first let's create this uh, Kafka producer so I am going to make use this spring initializer so here so I am going to choose the language as Java and after that Marvin as a build tool okay and so this is the version i'm going to use that is 3.2.3 here and let's take some group id here so let's take um producer demo okay and let's copy here and take artifact name same 
and after that so i'm going to take java 17 version so if you want like take current version that is latest version and after that let's add some dependencies that is spring web dependency and after that we need a kafka dependency okay and so let's take a lombok for setters and getters and let's generate this project and import into your id okay i already imported this in my IntelliJ to save the time okay let's create some configuration file here okay so let's take a um, configuration package inside this configuration package i'm going to take a producer configuration here okay and so this is our configuration right so let's annotate with the configuration here okay so uh, here we need like couple of things okay we need like three beans here one is like a uh, producer factory okay another one is kafka template okay and after that we need a uh, some new topic here okay so first of all like i will discuss uh, this three of them so what is like producer factory here so the producer factory is nothing but like it's a interface that is used to create kafka producer instances okay so um, by by using this basically the producer factory uh, developers can create and configure the kafka producers in a consistent and flexible manner uh, across the spring boot applications okay so and next one is kafka template what is a kafka template kafka template basically simplifies the usage of kafka producers within spring applications uh, i mean like by providing a higher level abstraction right so basically this kafka template encapsulates common producer common producer operations such as like sending the message to the kafka topics and it will provide like couple of methods for like sending the messages synchronously as well as asynchronously okay and after that we have a new topic okay so new topic will create like uh, some topic so we have to send the messages on the topic right so this topic will work as a logical channel so which will store the our messages okay so first of all <clears throat> let's create like producer factory so as a discussed we need a bean here right so okay so producer factory so i'm going to take string string here okay producer factory and so here i need some map here okay so inside this map i'm going to take um, string and object here okay so let's create hash map and after that so this config maps will have some key and values okay so we need like some values keys and values here the first one is uh, we need like producer configuration so we have a producer config class so which will contains a bootstrap server okay so we have to provide like bootstrap configuration that is a local host okay 9092 and after that uh, we have to provide like okay key serializer class configuration okay so string okay serializer class here. and after that uh, we have like another one that is value serializer class configuration this is also string so after that let's return new default kafka producer factory here we need to provide this configuration maps here that's it so our producer factory bean is ready now we need kafka template bean here okay so so let's create this kafka template bean as well so this is also will take string and string here okay so first of all i'm going to explain about the 
only string how to send the strings data and after that i'm going to explain about a uh, customized object i mean like user different object okay so so here kafka templates this is simple return new okay kafka template this will expect okay this producer factory here that's it and the last one is new topic we have to create some topic right so let's create this topic bean as well so i'm going to uh, make use this new topic okay so i will take a uh, payment topic as method name okay and return new okay new topic so this topic uh, will have like three parameters okay the first one is like number of partitions sorry first one is name and after that number of partitions and the third one is replication factor so uh, i'm going to take a payment topic as topic name and after that three partitions and i'm going to take one replication okay replication factor is one so it is throwing the error okay so replication factor is short here okay let's take short okay that's it so our producer configuration is ready now so we need a service right so that service will send the messages to the kafka topic right so inside this service um, package i'm going to create the producer service here okay so let's maximize this and let's annotate it with the service right so first of all we need like a kafka template so we have to auto wire this kafka template here right so this kafka template okay so let's auto wire this okay and after that yeah so what i'm going to do is uh, here so i'm going to generate some random transaction here okay generate random transaction here and after that i will send the transactions i mean like payment transactions so payment transactions okay in the two ways one is like um one is uh, asynchronously okay and another one is synchronously okay so okay so first like generate the transactions random transactions okay so to do this i'm going to create uh, one method okay let's copy this same as method name and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, take some vendors okay um, so uh, here i'm going to provide some vendors names here that is amazon okay and paypal okay let's take a visa and after that mastercard okay uh, after that i need a uh, single vendor okay so that single vendor what i'm going to do is vendors okay so we have like thread local random okay i will make use this vendors dot length okay so then i will get like single vendor here and after that i need to send the amount as well right so let's take amount um so how do i get the amount here we have a thread local random so current dot next double so here you can define the range as well okay suppose okay after that let's return a vendor okay so this vendor will have amount 
so amount uh, i will take as a dollar here if you want like take rupee as well okay so that's it uh, our generated random transaction is completed so with the help of this kafka template i will send this payment transactions asynchronously okay so uh, okay so public wide okay send transactions when uh, send payment transactions okay you want like uh, you can use asynchronously as well so here so we need kafka template right so this will send the transactions so now so the first one is we have to provide the topic name here after that so key and uh, and the value so the value is um, generate the random transaction right so uh, what i will do is transaction generate random transaction right so let's provide the transaction here right so that's it and uh, so here it will send it right so once it will send it so what is the metadata so i mean like where it has been sent it like so where it has been sent it to that specific topic and what is the partition and so what is the timestamp so if you want to know those details right so we have like uh, one asynchronous method okay so with the help of that uh, we will okay we will get some information so that is when complete method so once it is send it we will get some metadata okay so which will contains like two things one is like send result and throw okay so if this throw right so this throw not equal to null right so if it is not equal to null then we can consider that okay so this is on failure i mean like so this is failed so i will pass this uh, throwable okay and i will create this method else what will happen okay on success this send result okay we will create it two methods here okay that's it so now so here i need to provide uh, some metadata in the logs okay so here we have like uh, this send result right this send result will have some metadata right so this metadata i just printed here by using this send result okay object so which will have like topic partition and offset and the timestamp so in the case of success i'm printing all the information in the case of failure i'm just sending that so error occurred while producing the message here okay so that's it and now so this generating the payment transactions right so i need to um, run frequently for each and every two seconds or like two milliseconds right so what i have to do is here i need to enable the scheduler here okay enable the scheduling and after that okay and come back to this method so here i need to define the scheduler here okay mm. so some fixed rate is there that is 2000 milliseconds here okay so that's it so every 2000 milliseconds it will send this payment transactions here okay and log dot info 
here what I will do is um, sending payment transactions okay and you can print the transactions here okay that's it so uh, before this start this kafka produce you can just make sure that your kafka cluster is open and running in your system okay so let's hit this endpoint so let's start this kafka server and let's see whether it's working or not okay so you can observe here so how this is sending the payment transactions okay so this is sending the payment transactions okay visa amount like this right so this is randomly generating some amount for each and every two seconds here right so and after that i am receiving some metadata once it is sending to this of course topic okay so i am getting like topic name here payment topic and the partition zero and offset okay what is offset and what is the timestamp right so like this i will get metadata here right and apart from this we have like offset explorer so if you want to explore your uh, i mean like this topic partition details you can explore here okay i connected here and let's refresh this okay let's click on topics our topic name is payment topic let's click on this and partitions we have a three partitions right and if you want to see here we will see this what is the start offset and end offset here okay so if you refresh here you will see all the details and same thing we will see partition 1 and partition 2 we don't have any partitions information in partition 1 and partition 2 okay and if you want to see the data on partition 0 you can click on data and let's click on this play button you will see data here okay and replicas information also available we have only one replica okay this one this is the node right so this is how the data will see here and so we have a three partitions but the data is sending to the specific partition right so but what i need is i need to distribute all the messages to all the partitions okay in that case i need a key here while sending these messages okay i need to send the key as well so what i will do is i will write one more method public string okay generate transaction key here so return we have a uuid random uuid to string okay that's it so let's make use this uh, random UUID generation as a key in our okay Kafka template at send method okay so let's restart this now if you can observe here it is sending the message to all the partitions first it started sending through zero and 2 and 0 and 1 okay like this right so in the offset explorer as well we can see here so 0 is increasing this offset values and let's see this one partition as well and second partition as well okay so so this is how the data will be distributed among all the partitions by using the key here so if you're not providing the key it will send to the send to that specific partition not for all the partitions here okay so now let's stop this so this is for like asynchronously sending the messages what about like synchronous right so let's copy this method okay and let's paste here and change method name as synchronously okay 
so we have a transaction here now I will remove this when complete okay this is asynchronous right so I need synchronous we have a get method okay so this get method okay what is there with unhandled expect okay add the exception to method signature okay so this will return okay send a result okay so let's take the send result here right so <clears throat> so this is synchronous okay now so this send result will have okay get record metadata and this will have topic and offset and timestamp and partition okay all the details here so we will print all the information here as well okay so like this you can print it by using this send result here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to return send result instead of void here okay so now let's test this let's comment this asynchronous and let's enable on the synchronous method okay let's start this application okay so this is also sending the messages synchronously and let's verify this offset explorer here so we have provided the key that is the reason it is distributing all the messages among all the partitions here okay perfect so this is how you can send uh, your messages synchronously as well as asynchronously by using this kafka template so uh, before i'm going to jump into this consumer programming i would like to discuss about like consumer a little bit deeper here okay so the consumer can read the data from one or more partitions at a time in a apache kafka here right so a consumer always read the data from lower offset to okay higher offset but uh, that is not possible in the reverse case okay and if consumer consumes the data from more than one partition right right so the message order is not guaranteed here across like multiple partitions why means like uh, they are consuming simultaneously right so that is the reason it's not possible so apart from this the producers will send the data in asynchronous way right so the consumption also is asynchronous only okay so that will allows the continuous processing without waiting for each message individually here and after that the producer will send the data in a serializable format so whatever that data is coming to this serializable format so the consumer also deserialize the data before it's processing here okay so that will convert the byte format messages into usable data structures here okay so apart from this consumers are assigned to a specific partition okay within a topic that will enable the parallel processing and scalability and consumers can acknowledge the message received and commit offsets here to the GUPI pair, right? So that will ensure the reliable and at least once message delivery here, okay? And apart from this consumer group here, right? So the consumers are organized into the groups, each processing a subset of the messages, okay? And this facilitates the scalability and load distribution here. And apart from this, Kafka supports like mechanism for like achieving exactly once semantics that will ensure the messaging process processing integrity here okay okay so now the producer part is done so now we need a consumer right so let's take a consumer demo here okay let's paste here and let's generate this project and import into your id okay and i already imported here so we need like uh, one configuration class okay let's uh, create like configuration package inside this I'm going to create consumer configuration here right so this is the configuration and so in this consumer configuration we need like two things here okay uh, the first one is consumer factory okay and the second one is uh, concurrent 
concurrent um, Kafka okay listener container factory okay so the consumer factory so first of all we need to create the consumer factory uh, like we created okay consumer factory here okay here also string and string so we are going to consume string here okay let's maximize this and so here uh, here also need a map map of configuration so that is a string again and object here okay and so let's import this map here okay config map okay and so let's create new hash map here okay and config map dot put so again here uh, we need like a consumer config which will contains um, bootstrap servers configurations so this bootstrap configurations I need a local host 9092 okay and we need like a key deserializer here okay so key deserializer is uh, string deserializer class okay and I need one more that is value deserializer con class configuration okay this is also string deserializer and let's return okay a default consumer factory this will take our configuration map okay so our consumer factory bean is ready now and uh, after that okay we need this concurrent kafka listener container factory okay so this will also take string and string and okay let's import this okay and what we have to do is we have to create the object for this okay and we need to set this consumer factory here okay and let's return this container factory here okay so that's it so this is our bean class okay so our configuration class is ready now we need a service class okay so consumer service this consumer service let's add it with aggregate of service here okay we need a kafka template here okay private kafka template so let's take a uh, string okay let's auto wire and so we need to consume the messages here right so public void okay listen the messages so to listen the messages uh, what we need to do is okay so we need to uh, listen the messages here right we need to uh, have like one listener that is kafka listener so this kafka listener will have topics so inside this topics we have to provide our a payment topic name here okay after that we have to define the group name here group uh, that is group id okay so i just provided group id and after that you can provide listen or consume so if you want like uh, naming convention you can provide the consume here so here 
what I will do is I will take um, SL4J and I will print the log here log.info um, what I'm going to do is okay here string message here that's it and you can just start this let's check it out let's start the producer as well let's see whether it's consuming the consumer here yeah so uh, we are receiving the messages here okay so like this you can get the messages here and let's stop this so this is how you can consume the messages by using this kafka listener here okay so uh, here we need to provide the topic name here we need to provide the group id okay now we have seen like how to listen the messages here okay by using this kafka listener so here we are actually we are getting only string message right so let's say that if i want to see like what are the details are we required our end so let's say that we need like partitions offset details and we need key and value so all those stuff we required right so in that case so what we need to do is we need to make use this consumer records which will take the types here that is key and value so let's take um type is string and value also string here right so here so here i will print like key and values okay that will get from this message and partition and offset also i'm printing here okay so let's check this so first of all like let me start this producer and producer is sending the messages and let me open the consumer and let's start this consumer as well now it should print key and value and partition and offset also okay okay you can see here we are getting partition and offset value apart from this actually we are getting key and value as well right so like this it will work okay let me stop this let me stop producer as well So okay, so till now what we have covered is we have created the producers and we have seen like how to send the messages with uh, asynchronously as well as synchronously as well, right? And apart from this, actually we have sending the messages with key and without key, right? And we have created the consumer and how we have seen like how to listen the messages by using the of Kafka listener as well, okay? Now the next one so how to send the messages to a specific partitions okay that means like how to send the message to specific partitions means we can specify the partitions okay specifically in our producer so let's go back to our producer configuration here okay and this is our producer service right so in the kafka template we have a send method so right now we are sending topic okay and key and value so this send method if you can see this another send method which will contains partition as well okay so topic partition key and okay data now let me go back to our method here i will specify partition one now it has to be sent to only specific partition that is partition one here okay let's start this okay so if you can observe here in the console so it is sending to specific partition that partition one here right and also if you want like you can check it out uh, consumer as well so it will listen the messages from the producer as well okay you can check this latest messages we are getting only from partition one right so now 
let's go back to producer and let's remove this specific partition value here okay now how to listen the message from a specific partition right so let's go back to our consumer the consumer what we have to do is this is our kafka listener okay so here you can define topic partitions so under this topic partitions actually we have a annotation called topic partition okay so this topic partition so let's okay let's make it down and here we have a like topic name so in the topic name we can provide the topic so our topic name is payment topic here let's provide here and after that what we need to do is we have to provide the partitions okay so the partitions you can provide like a number of partitions here so let's say that i want to listen from only 0 comma 1 okay so then it will listen only messages from 0 comma 1 otherwise if you want to listen from 1 comma 2 then you can listen only from this specific partitions okay so if you want you can just test it out here let's start this producer and let's go back to consumer here okay let's start this consumer now we can see only partitions from 1 comma 2 here okay so if you can observe here we are getting messages only from 1 and 2 partitions here okay so this is how we can do it by using this configurations okay let's stop this stop this producer as well okay let's go back to our ppt and so we have seen like how to send the message to specific partitions and how to listen the message from a specific partitions now producing and consuming the custom messages custom messages okay so let's open our code here so i have already written this code for custom messages custom messages means in the real time so let's say that if you want to send the objects data instead of string or like integer like long values here right so here i have been taken as string as okay key and value as location here so location means this location will have a id and location okay id and string here so this will extend the message metadata in the real time so we will send the messages metadata as well so let's say that if i want to set the message id and source originator and timestamp source originator means like uh, so from where this data is getting like let's say that you have like multiple services so from you want to know so from which service you are getting the this um, data okay so this messages metadata is very important here so that is the reason i just extended here so along with this location data i will send this message metadata as well okay and apart from this uh, while you are sending the messages right we need to serialize the data into the byte format right so here our key is string serializer and value is our json serializer here okay this is very important so you can just make sure that you can define this configuration here and apart from this um, coming to the producer service so what i'm doing here is so yeah i'm just taking like some location data here in the form of array okay new york los angeles chicago houston like this okay and so okay so here i am generating this uh, random location data by using this thread local random okay and i am making use here i am setting this data into this location object here that's it okay so i'm synchronous asynchronously only i'm sending the data okay here and this is the producer part and coming to the consumer here right so consumer also same location data i'm using here and if you go for this consumer configurations here also we will have like uh, group id configuration so group id means for each consumer group there could be one unique group id so we have to define this unique group id for your consumer group which will contains like more than one consumer so you can identify your consumer group with this group okay id configuration here and apart from this we need to deserialize the data so before we are going to consume our okay our data here so 
our key deserializer is string deserializer and value deserializer is our json deserializer here okay and the rest of the thing is same okay let's go back to our consumer service okay so here i'm just listening the messages by using this consumer record here so let's go back to our producer service let's start this okay now we are sending the messages to a topic and go back to our consumer and let's start this consumer here so this time actually i'm expecting key and value value is our location data here okay so this is my key and value so if you can see here key is there and value is value will contains message id timestamp and id and location name here okay and source originator so that is location service so like this we will get this key and value apart from this we are getting partition value and offset value here okay so this is how we can um, send and consuming this custom messages here okay so now one more thing is like consumer partition rebalance here so rebalancing means let's say that your consumer group has like more than one consumer right so in this case basically what will happen is uh, group coordinator will come into the picture so let's say that you have a multiple consumers more than one consumer like two consumers are there so the group id is same for that um, consumer group and this consumers right in this case so the, the group coordinator will trigger the rebalance here so what is a rebalance rebalancing means changing the part partnership ownership from one consumer to another consumer okay so that rebalance will occur here and group coordinator will um, assign the partition to a specific consumers okay so let's see that example as well now so here so we are already running this um, consumer right so in this case actually we have a three partitions we have a single consumer and three partitions so these three partitions are assigned to a single consumer okay that partition is topic 0 1 and 2 here so three partitions are assigned to a single consumer here now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start one more consumer here that is consumer 2 okay so what we have to do is edit the configuration i already created the consumer 2 so here you can just define like another port number so that consumer will going to start on this port number okay and just run this and now the group coordinator will come to the picture and assign the partitions according to this consumers we have two consumers right so this consumer 2 has only single partition that is partition 2 here right and let's go back to our consumer 1 so this is also has been changed let me show that that one as well okay see this group coordinator again assigned this two partitions only so earlier we have a single consumer at that time three partitions assigned to a that single consumer now we have a two consumers in this case two partitions only assigned to a consumer one that is zero and one partition is assigned to a consumer one whereas partition two is assigned to a okay consumer two so this is how this rebalance will occur okay and after that we have a committing offsets okay so what is the committing offset so let's go back to our code here so yeah before that uh, what i need to do is let's stop this stop all here so in the application that properties what i need to do is i need to start this application in the debug mode okay yeah so here committing offsets means what will happen so whenever this producer is sending the message to this topic right okay so the consumer will consume this partitions data from this topic partitions here okay so whenever this consumer will consume the messages okay it has to be sent the acknowledgement to this okay broker okay so so this is committing the offsets right so this committing offsets by default 
okay batch so batch means um, we have a different types of acknowledgement modes here so let's go back to so this spring documentation here so what it is saying is uh, several options are provided for committing offsets if the art if the enable auto commit consumer property is true kafka auto commits the offset according to its configurations okay so if it is false by default it will false here okay let me start this okay so enable auto commit is false okay and that's what it is saying so if it is false the container supports several acknowledgement mode settings right so we have a several acknowledgement settings okay so the default acknowledgement mode is batch here okay so starting with 2.2.3 uh, is the framework sets enable auto commit to a false so that's what we can see here and so we have a consumer poll method so that returns one or more consumer records okay the message listener is called for each record here so the following list describe the action taken by the con container for each acknowledgement so by default this this is our setting so act mode is batch here what is act mode so commit the offset when all records returned by the poll that have been processed here okay so let's say that we have a hundred records okay so at a time like we received like 100 records so after this all 100 records are processed then only the commit will be happen okay so let's say that if you are using record here so for each and every record it will commit the offset so that's what it is saying commit the offset when the listener returns after processing the record here okay and apart from this we have a different options time count okay manually also you can okay committing your offset as well okay depends on your requirement you can use here manual immediate also is there so let me go back here okay and let me show this batch mode so by default it is batch mode right so yeah so initially you can see this we got like how many records 56 records from the from the producer we got 56 records at a time now what it is what it is doing is first of all like it is processing okay and partition one and offset so each offset it is processing here okay for each record you can see this processing and offset values here so after 56 records are processed then only it will commit the offset here so i will show you that log as well commit the offset log here see so we can see committing list here so at offset 50 it is committing okay after that we got like single record only receive one record and after that after processing this single record we are again committing here so depends on the receiving the records it will commit the offset here so this is batch mode so what if like if i want to enable okay record mode for each and every record it has to be commit the offset right so okay so this one so spring kafka listener act mode equal to record here now let's clear this console and let's start consumer again okay so here we can go to initial stage initially we got how many records 10 records and it is processing single record and after that committing immediately after single record is processed here right and again okay one more record processing and committing processing committing okay so like this for each and every record it will process and commit immediately okay so like this we have a couple of options as i mentioned earlier we have a time count okay so depends on the requirement you can choose different options here okay let's stop this and go back to producer and stop this okay and go back to our ppt okay so let's say that if you want to use like concurrent consumers here so if our application is running on like cloud or like kubernetes then this option is not required because 
let's say that your application is deployed on kubernetes pods unlike multiple pods right so each one will treat as a okay single pod here and single instance of your application right i mean like that will run a single single pod is a single container then if your application on multiple containers then option this option is not required here okay so let's go back to our code let me show you that example as well so in the meantime what i'm going to do is let's start this producer and go back to our consumer here and let's clear this console okay now go to your consumer service okay here we have an option concurrency okay so if you want to start your consumer on three containers okay so you can just provide the concurrency here to improve the performance of your application then you can go for concurrency here okay so let's start this consumer and let me show you how this container with containers will start parallelly and consuming your messages here okay and okay so if you can see here we have a different different options here we have a container one year container two here okay and let me show you container zero as well container zero okay zero one and two so three containers are parallelly consuming your messages here okay so like this you can make use this concurrency as well okay so now i'm going to talk about how to uh, handle these errors in the kafka okay so um so i'm going to show you like how to implement the error handling in the kafka consumers for our spring boot application here okay so we have like three options one is like blocking retry here what is the blocking retry so do retry when retryable exceptions occur during like consuming a message okay so so if a exception is occurs right so then it will block the next message okay and the non blocking retry in kafka so name itself we can non block the retry in kafka here okay so send the messages to another retry retry topic here it will create like a retry topic okay okay and it will send the message to that retry topic so when the message exceeds the blocking retry max attempts limit here so we can define the retry max attempts limit here so if it is exceeds then it will send the message to this non blocking retry topic here okay simple okay the next one is dead letter topic and handler what is this so we have to send the message to this another dead letter topic here okay so when the message exceeds non blocking retry max attempts limit here okay even if this uh, retry uh, non blocking retry max attempts limit is exceeds okay then it will send the message to this dead letter topic here okay so now let's go back to our producer and let's start this let's start this application okay and after that go back to our consumer here um okay so in the consumer basically we need to throw some of the exceptions right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take integer dot parse int here so here i'm going to take message dot value okay so what it will do is um it will throw the number format exception because i am taking the string value here okay so let's start this consumer so this is blocking read try so i'm going to show you how this uh, blocking read try will throw the exceptions here okay and it will block the next message here so let's stop this and so go to your console and search with back of here okay okay so you can see this fixed off back set uh, fixed off okay fixed back of settings here so uh, if you can observe here so the default behavior is okay so this is the default behavior of this default error handler here so here we have like couple of uh, fixed back of options uh, one is like uh, so what it is saying is the default behavior is attempt to attempting to consume the one message at least 10 times here okay then the consume the next message and print the error log if if it is like still fails okay so uh, 
and after that it is sending some messages right so then it is printing the error here number format exception here okay so like this it will block to the next message here okay next one is like non-blocking uh, non-blocking retry here okay so non-blocking retry what we can do is uh, here we have a at the rate of retryable topic here okay so with the help of this it will build the retry topics for us with the uh, with the like broker default settings here okay so here what we can do is we can provide like um, sorry inside this we can provide the attempts here so how many times you need to be retry your message here once it is failed and after that we have a back of so within the back of we have a data of back of so this will take um, some delay okay so how much uh, time you need to be take delay here let's say that you need to take like 3000 milliseconds here you can just provide here and after that we need to provide the multiplier here okay so initially it will take like 3000 milliseconds for next attempt how much time you need to be multiply okay so let's say that i need to multiply two times here let's say that initially it will take 3000 for the next attempt it will take 3000 into 2 6000 milliseconds okay like this it will retry and it will send the message to retryable topic here okay how many times three times it will be attempt and let's start this consumer and here you can see all the messages okay and stop this and go to your initial stage of the console so here you can see we are getting the messages and it is sending to this retry topic here let me show you that see this okay destination resolve return the non-existence partition payment retry topic 3000 okay Kafka producer will determine partition to use for this topic. So if you want like in detail, ex, uh, in detail exception details, just go to this offset explorer and just reconnect here and let's click on this topics. Here we will find so this retry topics here. The first one is um, payment topic retry 3000 milliseconds, right? And after that we have like one more that is second item like 6000 milliseconds. Okay. And if you want like check it out this partitions details as well okay here we have properties as well how many messages we got it what is the offset values and consumer also have this group ids In the here also you can see so what is the topic and what is the partition and what is the starting offset and what is the ending offset and what is the lag here okay so like this we can see the all the messages here and now so we have a dead letter q or like a dead letter topic as well so what we need to do is if this attempts is exceeded okay if you want to send this failure message on the dead letter queue what we can do is so we have to create one okay dead letter queue process messages okay um process failure messages okay process failure messages and here you can provide consumer record so this consumer record will take both of the strings okay and i'm going to take the message here and here you can just print this key and value and just change this key and value i'm going to print like dead letter okay topic key and value here and on top of this method i'm going to provide the dead letter handler here that's it okay now let's start this and you can see the console how this dead letter handler will reach the message to this dead letter topic here okay and let's stop this and let's go back to your console and let's see how this dead letter okay is receiving your messages after this three attempts is exceeded okay here we can see we are getting dead letter q this is a record okay and this is the message so once three attempts is exceeded okay then the messages are reaching to this dead letter queue here so if you want um, you can see here as well okay dead letter topic key okay like this it will print and go back to your offset explorer 
and let's reconnect this and go back to our topics here we have a dead letter topic here right and partitions and check it out so here also we are getting the messages this is okay offset values and here we have a group id as well so let's click on this group id dlt that is dead letter q okay you can see this partition and this is a starting offset and ending offset okay so like this uh, it will print uh, all the messages once it is reached to dead letter q here so in the real time what we need to do is once uh, you got like failure messages on the dead letter q so you need to know right so how you are um, how to handle these messages you need to send some um, emails okay email notifications here okay about failure messages here so that like development team are like users to know that so these are the messages are failure so that like we need to take some action to resolve these messages okay so like this uh, we can handle the exception handling in the kafka okay so that's it guys if you like my video please go ahead and like my video so if you haven't subscribed my youtube channel so please go ahead and subscribe my youtube channel thanks thanks for watching bye have a good day